Hello. Uh, somebody asked me earlier what pixie dust was, and I said it, it's a metaphor, like auto magic. Uh, anyway, um, so the the goal with creating this rebar plugin for Typer was um, to make it so that you could automate it, because automate using Typer thanks to rebar. Um, or, you know, in other words, make it dead simple to use, right? Uh, so today I'm going to talk to you about how we got the plugin started, um, what we discovered along the way, what we did about that discovery, and um, show you how it works. And I was saying we, so I uh, figure I should clarify that by we, I mean Brujo Benavides, um, Pablo Costa Sanchez, and me. Um, and we did this as part of a Hack Week project at um, Nextroll, which is twice a year. We have um, a week to work on whatever kind of project we want to. So as I said, the goal was to automate Typer um, by, by making it into a plugin for Rebar. Um, or So that, this is all part of our dastardly plan to get more people to put type specs into their code. Uh, but the way that we got started was using this uh, plugin template. Uh, apparently, GitHub has this now, where there are template repos. And so you can click that green Use This Template button, and it'll give you a copy of whatever was in that repo. Um, and it has to be specifically set up for that. So this uh, plugin repo. Um, Plugin template was created by uh, Slava, so thank you to Slava for that. Um, this using the template mode is different than forking in that it doesn't like show up as a fork in GitHub and it doesn't have all the repo history. When you use this template, if you are going to create your own um, rebar plugin, it's pretty straightforward. You're going to do a search and replace and replace everywhere that it says repo name. And then you can pretty much ignore the uh, rebar3 whatever .earl file. That one's good to go. The PRV one, the private one, that's where you're going to put all of your code that does stuff. And that goes into, well, the, your main equivalent is the do function. Uh, obviously, it's easier said than done for put do stuff in do. Uh, so our plan was that we were going to get all the options you know, parse CLI options. We were going to parse options out of um, rebar config. We're going to put those two together and decide priority on them, and then call relevant functions within Typer to make it go. But we hit this bump, of course. Um, turns out Typer didn't have an API. Uh, there was no way to call into the functions into it at all. So we were thinking, well, so do we like take we get our CLI options, and we get the rebar config options, and we decide between them what CLI options we should pass, and then it just is making up the CLI options. Uh, it's kind of, kind of messy, kind of boring. Uh, and also, we can't use the undocumented features that we found in Typer's code base that way. So yeah, some of those existed. So here's what we decided to do about that. Um, we vendored it, vendored Typer into our plugin. Then we split out what we decided to call Typer Core to expose an API. And we submitted that as a patch back to OTP so that now, it, as of OTP 25, uh, Typer actually has an API. Uh, because you know, we don't want to hold on to a vendored version long term and have to maintain that. Nobody wants to do that. And so you can see in March that split out one was merged into main. So while we were working on the, uh, on the plugin and, you know, looking at Typer's code and actually digging into it to break out that Typer core, um, we thought maybe we should make some improvements. And 
So we thought, well, wouldn't it be cool if instead of annotations going into the folder full of annotation files, they could actually just go directly into your code? Like, that would be a lot more convenient, right? And what if we modernize the code base a little? Because Typer has been around for a while, and back in OTP 17, we got maps added to Erlang. Uh, they weren't being used in there. They were the old map dicts, so we upgraded that. And yes, of course, those, those uh, improvements we sent upstream. Uh, also, what if we could find the PLT file from Dialyzer automatically instead of having to have the developer configure here's where it is. I have to go find it and configure here's where it is. Because right now, if you use typer on the command line, you have to pass that as an argument. Here's where it lives. And what if we could find all the code and libraries automatically? Um, you know, we know where they go by default. We know where umbrella apps put them. We know where it's configured and rebar config for them. We should just use it. It's the benefit of, con of integrating into rebar, right? Now, in case any of you are interested in making your own rebar plugin at some point, uh, here's, I'm just gonna share some code snippets you might find useful that, that we had to use in the process. Because finding, that, finding where the code lives is handy. So this was the version for uh, umbrella apps using app discovery. Um, you can see we're going through uh, the project apps list and finding what directory that would be in and attaching it to source. And um, in other cases, getting the sourcers, the extra sourcers, and the subders through the rebar state and merging those lists together should handle any explicitly configured stuff you've got going on in rebar config. But if it's totally unconfigured, we can go for the defaults and you see that wildcard thing there. And really, I, I don't expect anybody to be just like reading the code right now, but you know, slides in the future if you ever want to make a plugin. Um, so, for how it works, uh, how would you use it, right? So, for setup, you can add your uh, add it to your project plugins. Uh, just rebar three typer and version string, as usual. Um, and if you don't already know some of these other uh, plugins here, you should definitely check them out, because you know, you've got formatting, linting, um, dead code detection. Uh, Sheldon is a, is a spell checker. And then I say on the slide that you can optionally configure um, the typer plugin. And I say optional because as, as previously explained, it can make a lot of guesses about your code base. Uh, so the main thing that you might want to configure is the mode, and so that's what I showed here. The default is just show, where it's going to show on the command line what your specs should be. Uh, but if you want to do something else, like the new annotate in place, you can do it that way. Uh, when you want to run it, a prerequisite is you have to already have your PLT file generated. We don't generate that for you. So, of course, you run rebar three dialyzer before doing your rebar three typer. And so here's a little demo. Okay, so to show you, we have, there's the diff showing adding the plugin to the rebar config. And so next step, of course, you have to compile your code. I suppose when you run dialyzer, it would do it itself too. So we're just waiting for that. It's, it's small, it'll be quick. Okay. And so next, we're going to run Dialyzer on it to generate the PLT file. And again, that'll be pretty quick because it's not a large code base. Uh, by the way, what I'm doing this on is Erlang-M, which is a um, Erlang library for interacting with AWS permissions. Uh, you can see here, rebar three typer, annotate in place. And now it's saying it's processed all those files. And so when you look at Git again, you can see it's changed all of those Erlang files because it's added specs to them. And so we're just going to look at a couple of those. So there's the Erlang.erl, 
And you can see we've got specs on credential, HTTP profile, and validate. Uh, let's look at another one. There's the uh, erlam sts.erl, and you can see much more complex specs found on those files. All right, the demo was the end of the thing. So this was all that was left was the little thank you with the link so that you can find the plugin if you would like, and you know my contact info. And does anybody have any questions? <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thank you, McKinsey. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, let's let's get a question. Uh, congrats on your talk. And how do I know if your your plugin added the right type specifications? As far as that's concerned, it's whether Typer itself does. So if you find issues with it giving incorrect specs, that would be an issue with Typer itself. Um, and I said that we had vendored it, but since in OTP 25, our changes are there, we are updating it to, um, in OTP 25, use the, um, the built-in Typer instead of the vendored version. 